Hello, I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. I'm excited to bring you this new video series intended to enhance your understanding of your vestibular condition and to provide information that supports the work you're already doing with your healthcare provider and vestibular therapist. Now in this video, I'm going to answer one of the more common questions that I've received from people undergoing vestibular rehabilitation. That question is, why do the vestibular exercises that I'm doing make me feel worse while I'm doing them? And how can I better manage these symptoms? It's important to understand why vestibular rehabilitation exercises cause a temporary increase in symptoms. It's also important to know how much is too much and to learn ways to manage this process. The information in this video will help you continue doing the exercises and ultimately to help you achieve the best possible outcomes. Vestibular rehabilitation therapy strengthens the vestibular system located in the inner ear and the brain, eye muscles, and communication pathways located throughout the body that contribute to a healthy sense of where we are in space. Vestibular rehab also helps the body get used to movement again after motion sensitivity has developed. Stimulating the vestibular system causes a temporary increase in symptoms such as dizziness, imbalance, swaying, rocking, tilting, or other altered sensations of movement. This experience is similar to how balance exercises make us feel temporarily off balance while we're doing them or the way that strengthening exercises make us feel tired and even weak during or after we've completed the exercises. If we're exercising at a level that is challenging enough to make a difference, we're more than likely going to feel symptoms associated with stimulating or working that part of the body. But just as with any other exercise program, more is not always better. And we can cause harm by overdoing it or pushing too hard. So the next question is, how much is too much? If you're already working with a physical therapist, be sure to tell him or her what you're feeling and ask for their help in adjusting your program. Here are a couple guidelines for optimal recovery with a reasonable amount of discomfort. The first one is the 20 minute guideline. Any increase in symptoms that you feel while you're doing the exercises should dissipate within 20 minutes of completing the exercises. You may still feel your baseline symptom level, but the increase due to the exercises should resolve within 20 minutes. If your symptoms last longer than 20 minutes, it's very important to decrease the intensity of your exercises. Now here are a couple ways you can do that. Try taking more breaks between exercises so that your symptoms start to decrease before you begin the next exercise. Also, try decreasing the number of exercises, the number of repetitions, the speed of movement, or the amount of movement, or in other words, the range of motion. So try varying these parameters until you're able to recover within 20 minutes. Once you've found an intensity level that is challenging enough for you to feel some increase in symptoms, but you're able to recover within 20 minutes, stay at that level for a few days and then gradually increase the repetitions, number of exercises, speed, or range of motion. One increase at a time, day by day, week by week, as tolerated. The next guideline is to rate your dizziness or whatever symptoms you're having on a scale of zero to 10. Zero being no symptoms at all, 10 being the most severe. Now with that number in mind, before you start the exercises, consider how high you are willing to let your symptoms get. For example, if your baseline dizziness is at a five, so right in the middle of the range, and say you're willing to let your dizziness increase to a seven while you're doing the exercises, just make note of that, jot it down somewhere to remind yourself as you're doing the exercises what your maximum level is. Then as you're going through the exercises, if you feel your dizziness rise up to a seven, simply stop, take a break. Whether the rest break is a few seconds, a few minutes, or even the rest of the day, that's all fine. Give yourself that break to return to your baseline before you continue the exercises. 
With time and practice, the process of resting, recovering, and continuing the exercises without feeling overwhelmed will help you be able to tolerate them better and ultimately achieve the best possible outcomes. Now in a separate video for Vita, I've also explored the question of why vestibular rehabilitation takes as long as it takes. In another video, I defined vestibulo-ocular reflex and gaze stabilization to help you understand the basis of vestibular rehabilitation. So check out those videos if those are questions that you also have and you'd like that information to help you better understand your vestibular condition. Vita has published a, a wide variety of resources that can be helpful through this process. So click the link in the description down below to check out some of those articles. Also, if you're looking for a vestibular therapist or other type of medical provider to help with individualized evaluation and treatment, check out Vita's provider directory. The link to the directory is also in the description below. Also, I've posted a variety of videos on vestibular rehabilitation on my channel called Movement and Function. These videos range in intensity from beginner to advanced and address specific diagnoses. Click the link in the description below to check out my videos. I hope you found this video helpful for managing your vestibular condition and to help you perform your vestibular exercises to the best of your ability. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.